Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be expanding on the random image generator effect and actually having it so certain sounds play when certain images are shown. This is quite a complicated effect and it's not quite perfect so there's still some scope to improve this and optimize this but I thought I'd share it with you at the stage we're at at this point in time. So you'll notice we have some ands in there, which will validate the values we have. And I'll go through how this was built in a second, but I'm just going to quickly show you it in action. So if I tap the screen, it should randomize through the numbers. And once the randomization is finished, it will land on a number, trigger the appropriate and response to send a pulse to send um, a single clip controller to play that desired audio. And just to prove it's not just a fluke, and I'll try again. You can see all these triggers here going through. Now the only one that doesn't uh, currently play is the crisp image. But as you can see, all the other ones play different images when that clip is present. So I'll show you how this was built just now. So here we are back at our randomizer effect and again I'm only using a screen tap for the purposes of this tutorial. This could be replaced with a, a screen recording and you can use that in the video that will be linked in the description down below. So here you can see my basic setup I've got here. Uh, you'll notice that from my switch I've added an AND gate uh, that's in between the switch and the loop animation and between the less than and the loop animation as well. The reason for this is this and here is just to basically double verify that this number here needs to be less than six and that this action here with trigger so this could be from your screen recording to the and uh, for example because that would be a trigger if only those two things are in action at the same time will the animation start playing. And it's just again just a little fix to try and stop the loop animation playing in the background. Uh, not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but this basically just optimizes it a little bit further. So what we're going to do to begin with is I'm going to go to my less than value down here. I'm going to click and drag. And I'm going to add a not gate because a not gate is essentially a inverse of our operations. And what I want to do is have it so when this is not well, when this is not not than six, so i.e. I, higher than six, or it could be a greater than, essentially, uh, I want it to then activate the AND gate, which it'll be linked to. So I'm going to have an AND. So when this is more than six, by this not inversing it, then this will fire out uh, a value only if these two are triggered. So down here where we've got our round from our random value, I'm going to click and drag and add a equals exactly. So if this equals exactly the number we tell it, then this will be true. So if this equals exactly 1, so this value that's output here, the and this is also uh, greater than 6, then this will be firing. Now the reason this is higher than 6 amounts is because obviously it's just continuing its countdown at the moment. If I just reset it quickly, you'll notice that by default this will be off until we reset it and trigger it with the activator of the screen record or tap. So from this AND gate I'm going to click and drag and add a pulse. Like so, And I want this pulse to be, whenever this pulse is triggered I want it to activate our single clip controller. So the single clip controller here will handle our audio playback. Now you'll notice I've already imported some audio down here. I've just got these through the AR library and I just chose some random sounds. Again, you can import your own audio as long as it's an MP4, M4A, sorry, uh, in mono. And also you'll notice I've added um, some speakers by going to add object and add speaker. So just uh, heads up on that before I move too much ahead. So from the single click controller, I'm going to drag and click and add an audio player. And it's this audio player which will hook our speaker and our audio clip into. So I'm just going to choose this sound, speak, this sound here and clip it in as my audio clip. And then I'm going to choose my speaker, choose the audio uh, patch 
There we go. So I click the hour next to audio to create a patch. Link that to my audio player. So when this thing calls this, this should fire. So if we just um, falsify our results a little bit just to sort of show this doing to test that this works. So once it's greater than six, it should play the sound, which it does. Now you notice it didn't cycle for images because I've only got one in here and I've also changed my random value just to give me one just to make sure that the sound actually triggers. I'm just going to change that back now. So if I want to create more sounds, all I do is copy this uh, sequence I set up here and paste it. So this will automatically add in our link to our knot, which is we really require, and another and. We all we do need to do then is change our equals exactly on our copy to a different value and change our audio clip that is linked to our audio player. So in this case, I'm going to choose this one and just drag this in and hook this up and then choose another speaker and link this to the second audio player. So when this is now two, this will play this sound. When this is one, it will play this sound. And these AND gates are basically verifying whether that number is correct or not. So let's see if we can get a two to fire. Yep. So you'll notice uh, if I come out, this sound will continue playing until that sound is finished. So again, you want to crank it your clips fairly short if you're doing this. Um, and again, I can duplicate this as many times as I want, just changing the values. The only value I'd recommend not attaching an audio to would be a zero, because by default the values are always start off at zero. Even if we tell this that the beginning value is one, uh, we would it would always default to zero. So just bear that in mind with your animation sequence that you may not want to have an image is frame one or zero um, that you want to actually be triggered because it could cause you some problems if you're trying to link it to audio. So again, you can just keep copying and pasting this equals and pulse clip and audio player and just change out your audio clips by clicking and dragging your audio into the patch editor and then hooking it up to a different speaker, like so. And as long as all this is set correctly and you've got this knot linking to your AND and these two conditions are met, then this should everything past that point should fire and trigger. So I've been Steen Fisher. This has been the long-awaited uh, follow-up to the random image generator with audio. I've had a lot of people ask me how to do this and I dare say down the line I'll find a more efficient way of doing this. Uh, but for now this is a way to do it that seems to work fairly reliably. Uh, I'm just going to quickly show you actually before I end this video how you'd set it up if you're doing a screen recording uh, with this setup. So I'm just going to drag my camera into here, link my screen recording up to my pulse and link it up to my variables here. So everything that was linked to our switch would be linked to our trigger instead. And, I, and bear in mind, remember the screen recording action counts as a trigger. And we don't actually need that second pulse, for example. Uh, there we go. So you can see now, if we were to test this on my device, this would now act as a trigger and set us all motion off and equal the same as if we were doing our screen recording. So there we go. Hopefully this has been useful. If you can find a more efficient way of doing this, please let me know and post it in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Remember to like and subscribe if you like my videos.